welcome to this week's episode of Pit Against a Live Flesh and Blood Call-In Show. I'm William Table and Legs, and I'm joined by my constant co-host, Kevin Smurf Murphy. Kevin, what's up? What's up? Uh, in case you hear... No, never mind. We'll get to that later. Uh, Pit Against is a live call-in show. If you'd like to be on air talking to us about your take, probably about worlds... Join us in the Pitting Against Discord by clicking on the link that's in the description. Then join the waiting room channel. Put your hot take in the topics channel, next channel, blah, blah, blah. blah take, take, pull it into whatever, and then we'll talk to you, maybe. If, if you have something you want to talk about, we'll definitely talk about it. Uh, Kevin, you going to Worlds? Yeah. I you, fly out uh, on Tuesday. You fly out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's coming up. I'm so excited. I'm so... Fly out Tuesday I'm morning, so land Wednesday night. <laughs> oh my gosh wait that's like two days of it is 24 hours of travel with a 13 hour time difference okay so it's not 24 hours in the air it's 11 hours it is uh about 18 hours in the air for me 18 hours oh yeah because yes wow. there's two layovers that are each about three and a half hours so it's about 17 hours in the air okay that's crazy because I have to go from local airport to international airport within the U.S. and then from there to Tokyo and then Tokyo to Osaka. Holy frick. So, it'll be good. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm, um, I'm used to international trips. Sure, so. sure. I'm not yet, which is exciting. Soon. We're, Soon. You could have gone to fucking London? Uh... Not, not in qualified. my tax bracket. I don't think so. You could have qualified for fucking <laughs> I London. Qualified. I would have paid for you to go. Dude, okay. I feel like if I took myself seriously, well, we both know this. If I took myself seriously and went to as many PQs as possible, I could have gotten there, but I didn't. So I didn't. Um, you did only play one. I did only play one. Uh, so that's not like a huge sample size. And I also, I shouldn't say I wasn't taking it seriously because I definitely took the Swiss round seriously, but, but top eight I didn't take seriously because I just no. You immediately. scooped before yeah. the game yeah. started yeah. because you're. We've talked about mad. this. People know this now. Yes. Um. I've grumbled about it. I'm gonna yeah. grumble some more. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Until next <laughs> PQ season, or is Nat season next? What's the next? What's the next uh, I like? I believe next is RTN. Well, there's a skirmish season, but the next like qualifier season is RTNs. Okay. Uh, do we know how many PTs we're getting next year? Two? Yeah, two. Two. Okay, got mm -hmm. it. Um, Europe and APAC. So does that mean we'll do RTN and then PT season and then PT season when it comes to qualifying seasons? So, well, we already, we, we're we doing oh, this the is PT the first, season this, for the first Never one. mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember if the next PQ season is before the, or after London. The one I think it's before the ones that will happen next year, seasons that happen next year, will be yeah. RTN season, then PT season, then PT season. RTN season, well, PT, we're never, we're, we have one PQ season next year in the first half of the year. And then we'll have another one for 2025. Uh, for 2026. 2026. Yeah. All right. Okay. We, whatever. This is whatever. Um, there's a calendar. They've put it up. Put it out there. So it's a uh, spooky season right now. So my just sure. so preface just to preface this, my wife is in the other room playing scary games. So if you hear any screaming, just consider that atmosphere. It's yeah, that's just that's just background noise. Um, we don't have any callers yet, but if you'd like to call in and talk about talk about something, you can. But I guess I have some questions. Worlds is coming up. We're we just talking about worlds. Worlds is coming up. I have Next questions. Week. About worlds, I have I have a, we, a short list. This time next week, will we we will be starting coverage for day one, or we'll be around into day one or two, uh, round uh, or two, because of time difference. Yes, or thirteen. Yeah, hours because ahead. it's it'll be like eleven thirty in the morning on Friday. I think I read that it coverage starts at ten p.m. Eastern on Thursday, but maybe I read that wrong. Um, Ooh, are they doing delayed coverage so that they can do less time between rounds? That would be cool, and I Ooh. swore I just read that this morning, so I'm going to fancy double check it real quick because I know it's like the most recent page they put up. Yes, okay, so uh, yeah, 10 p.m. Thursday uh, for day one Friday. Sick. 
uh eastern time yep. our time our time eastern us uh 10 p.m thursday so i assume there's gonna be a delay uh it says, sounds about right says local time will be 11 a.m i assume the day starts at nine. Oh, interesting uh no yeah i believe it starts at nine hall hours are eight to nine p.m uh i'm pretty sure it's a 9 well, a.m start yeah it says 9 a 9 a.m start yeah so two hours okay so they are doing a delayed stream that means Which i'm gonna mean, need to be like on the internet to get the live updates uh yes so you'll you'll see players tweeting or posting on blue sky um well, that's actually updates yeah uh, a little bit before the stream yeah catches up the yeah. stream will probably end right about when the last round ends. But there's going to be much less downtime between rounds. They can set up backup matches much easier. This is what they did for Amsterdam, actually. Are um, Savage Feats helping with it? I'm going to guess they are. I hope so. I expect um, they are. But this is what they did for Amsterdam, yeah. which was really funny at one point because they were they were showing one of the games and they were casting one of the games and brian gottlieb was casting one of the games and in the player cam you can see brian gottlieb standing there watching the game oh. <laughs> because it's on a delay so he got to go watch the game he got to watch the game and then commentate it that's cheating <laughs> um, i love that so yeah i i'm gonna assume that's what they're doing uh and then there won't be a delay on sunday okay because that starts at nine and they can just go one game right into the next into the next into the next that makes sense um keynote on thursday keynote. starts at 6 30 in the morning which is 7 30 oh local gosh. which is a little bit later i think than they usually run it um but that's also to not have things get weird with team ll i assume yeah that they start at i assume noon. so yeah um, um so, i'm excited about team ll wait do we yeah coverage that's when world's team coverage LL? starts hmm do we not get coverage of Team LL? It doesn't seem like it. Which means I will be... I guess I'm making a Blue Sky account so I can post all of it. Oh, that's a great idea. Actually, if you want to follow the Table Pit on the internet other than just on YouTube, my personal updates along with maybe Kevin's and other people of the Table Pit, including the Table Pit itself, will be on Blue Sky instead of Twitter going forward. Uh, uh, which is I'm not going to post that much just because I don't want to be on there, but... I will go do live be, from the floor coverage of Team LL because that's sick. It'll be more like how the table pit will post more updates as opposed to respond and talk to yes. people. Uh, yep. The personality of Smurf will be updating people as opposed to uh, the person the Kevin pit. talking oh, to them. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Yes. Okay. Uh so I have I have a few questions um, for you, our resident expert, no on what's going to happen at Worlds since you already got the script from LSS. Uh, first one I thought would be funny. Oh what? <laughs> oh what word? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay. Cool. Uh, how much uh, count your blessings should I expect in top eight? Uh, at most one, I think. That was going to be my guess. Like. I think I, I, I think the way I have previously said it to somebody is I expect there to be a CYB deck in top nine. Uh, sure. But just one. I like, can see that. Like imagine if like there's only ninth place has a CYB deck and eight and top yeah. eight doesn't. Like that would be that's actually a little bit what I'm expecting. Yeah. What? So like one thing that I will say is the CC rounds, they've changed slightly, where day one is five rounds of CC and three rounds of draft instead of four and three. Okay. So you play a total of nine rounds of Classic Constructed, which means going X2 in Classic Constructed is a decent step harder. Yeah. Like, the difference between seven and two and six and two, it sounds like one game, but getting to the point where you can do that is substantially different. Um. Well, I mean, I think it about, also uh, it also means that like draft is slightly they, they drop the importance of draft a little bit, which I'm I'm totally in favor of this change overall. Okay, and I'm really happy okay. that it's going to be happening in London as well. Um, 
I think you're more likely to see CYB decks in top eight if it was four and three than in the way they've set it up, which is five and three. Okay. Because your class constructed rounds matter more. You're not going to, you have to, you're skill checking an extra opponent. Yes. On the world stage. Yes. Which means you're less likely to make top eight. You're less likely to win that game. There's there's literally a statistics change of, or, or probability change of yes. how many draft games percentage you're playing versus CC. Yep. So yep. naturally CC matters more because of that. Yeah. And the, the difference between having three wins out of your first five and having three wins out of your first four is a huge difference. It's huge. Like they actually made CC matter a ton. Like they, I think they actually hit a really good balance where if it was five and three the first day and then three and five the second day, draft wouldn't matter quite enough and you have to eight and two CC. Yeah. Otherwise you can't make top eight. Yeah. I think they actually hit a pretty good balance here where it's like you're heavily, you have to X2 one of them and you have to X1 the other. So That's if you so go four two in draft, yeah. you basically have to eight and one class constructed, which means you're fucking on it. Yeah. No, you have eight to have one the deck and on and, fire. Yeah. Or your draft has to be fantastic, and you're going five and one, which means you three zero one of your pods, and you still have to go seven and two in CC. That's like, fucking hard. Like your your safest route where you get a little bit of buy and everything is you like lose one CC game day one, lose yep. one game in the dra first draft, lose one game in the second draft. And then you probably still have to 4-0. And then you have to 4-0. And then you, you have to straight up 4-0 the last couple of games. You might be able to lose the last CC game. I'm not 100% sure. It depends on how many people the, and all that. It's an extra round. The... But, the math, it which is, some people have probably already run for the difference yeah. between five games CC day one versus four is actually really interesting. Now, at the yes. end of the day, does it matter? Kind of not. You need to just win. Just play. Well, just win. Yes and no. OK, because like, yes, just win your games. But you also have to pick what you're preparing, how you spend your time preparing. True. That's a good point. Are you going to spend more time? on draft trying to get from a consistent two one or a consistent four two to a five one or are you going to spend more time getting from an x three to an x two to an x one in cc and then how much does that affect your deck choice in cc which then means more reps potentially like there there are choices that's to make great because before it was you picked a good enough deck and runaways has talked about this at length and i think they really just kind of hit the nail on the head with it was you picked a good enough deck in CC to go X2. And you had 3-1 and 3-1, and that was fine. But you had to X1 draft, which meant they spent way more time on draft Yeah. than they did CC, because they were just like, we're going to 6-2, it's fine, we'll skill gap if we 7-1, fantastic. So, But like, yeah. Evan Herndon made top eight of Nats with an X2 draft record because he 8 owed CC. Which is insane. Which is nuts. He had to 8-0, except maybe he could have lost the last round. But he 2 won both of his drafts. It's so interesting like, thinking about... I'll say this and then I'll wrap it up. Uh, it's so interesting thinking about uh, this because this is like the kind of thought process that isn't necessarily required to be the best because you don't necessarily need to no. think about the games on the day but it's it's interesting that what we're discussing right now is like the difference between the top one percent and the top two percent of players or something like that like this is the like top like such five percent yeah point one percent yeah this is like it's so essential. marginal and it's yes and it's so interesting and it matters um yes which like, is it matters yeah. for like the entire month leading up to the event and then it doesn't matter on the day because your decisions are made and done yes and then what getting back to what you said mm -hmm. then your job is to win games then and your job is to win games yes day of win games um yeah put your put your practice Which, where your so, mouth is circling back circling back cyb is cyb is gonna have a harder time in nine rounds of cc than in eight it's much easier to get a six and two out of a CYB deck than it is to get a seven and two 
because Ooh. that seventh win. So like take all the six and two players in CC, only half of them get seven and two. Uh, do, so does, um, so how does CYB, this is an interesting question I just thought of, does CYB hmm. get better or worse if that bonus CC game is day one or day two? I assume it's worse if it gets Ooh. day two, right? Yes. Yeah, like what if it was four rounds CC, three rounds draft, yeah, three yeah, rounds yeah. draft, five rounds CC? Um, I think it is worse if that round is in day two because okay. you're that's when you're fighting for top eight and that's when you're against better players. Yeah. If you're taking CYB, you better four one or five zero oh, your CC rounds, and that's fucking hard. Yeah. Because it's also just like as soon as you're into that four zero bracket. If you were to go into draft, much easier. Mm -hmm. But if you have to play another round of Classic Constructed, the odds that you lose that game are very, like, are are not in your favor. People people know what they're doing. Well, people know what they're doing in general because they are going yes. to worlds. But like, but like every time you you go up one o two o three o, the number of players that are in that bracket gets cut in half. Yes. So you're not just against the top four hundred. You're up against the top two hundred, top hundred, top fifty. And eventually you hit you the peak where there is only Michael Hamilton and Alex Argeyu. Is Alex going? Do we know that? I would assume he's I is. going. I, LSS should ship him out if he said no. Like I think you LSS should anyways. be paying for their current world champion or maybe the past three world champions to go to Worlds. That's a different uh, hot take, but I agree. That That is a different thing, and I think most people will agree with it until LSS shows us the money, and then we're like, okay, fine, I understand. You're spending the money in a different, better way. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you're comfortable taking Count Your Blessings up against Hamilton, Argiriu, Shoma, no. Arthur Trahey, no. Pablo Pintor. <laughs> if they had that if they had that Blitz Fi deck that I was playing before this uh, thing started and I was on my CC deck of choice, I would probably be nervous. Uh Yeah. <laughs> holy frick okay so i think all of this talk about you know the weight of draft and cc um it, how cyb deck is affected by the new change in draft and cc leads me to uh my next question which is like we've how studied do you need to be in draft how studied will players need to be in draft for this world, right? So we've we've talked about previously on other podcasts, and I've also heard other people say it, where it's like, you need to be amazing at draft. You need to be amazing at draft, because as we yeah. just said, you can lose two yeah, games, yeah. and that's as much as they'll let you. You, If you lose two games, you better be crushing class constructed. It, now, exactly. this is just true. Like, if we're, if we're going to measure, like, requirements to get to top eight yeah you pretty much have to x3 the tournament which means mm -hmm. you're x1ing or x2ing draft at most and then you're eight wanting cc um it's interesting because this draft format is the three draft formats we've had for worlds are vastly different oh i'm trying to remember so we had uprising, uprising. season one which season. is fairly like yeah. uprising as a format is very much you have your lane and you better be in it and you because better if you're not you're screwed yeah and then things are kind of on rails and it's just like you might like it, you read your seat well and you get rewarded yes um and you might need to get a little bit lucky to get a 3-0 but you can 2-1 reasonably well within your control uh then you have last year bright lights Bright Lights. Oh, I forgot it was Bright Lights. For some reason, Which I thought Bright Lights was one of the peak tees. Wild no. West of a format, but like we watched Man. Yuki 6 0 draft and absolutely dumpster people. And not a single person is legally allowed to say uh, there was a. Um, there was more luck involved than skill because we all know how much time Yuki shoves into this draft format. She yeah. made 6 0 happen. Like maybe well, she, the thing yes, was yes. five one six zero. Oh, like maybe there's like that wiggle room, but it's like she made six zero oh happen. She made choices in that draft that I think very few players would have made. And I, the the one that in particular comes to mind is uh, pack one pick one overload script. 
I think, in her second draft. Okay. Which is, one, was not one. the standard. That's is the, my understanding. That's the red, right? It's a it's the red item, zero cost, crank. While this is in play, uh, your atta- your mechanologist attack action cards have overpower. That's bold. Yes. Yeah. That was not. Mo- that would not be most people's pack one pick one. It's a nice I feel little like glue you piece. Be, you got to be pretty confident to pick that. That's really. She good. knew what she was fucking doing. Holy frick! Yeah. So like Bright Light's draft process was kind of insane. Yes. It was, I think, still Rosette is a very close second on this for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I still think Bright Lights was the best drafting process we have had. Because having mono class just your skill expression in the draft process isn't just through the roof. It is it is unmatched. Um Rosetta is a very close second in that for flesh and blood. Makes sense. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, we go into this format and we, I have not heard pro players talk about a, a draft format like this, where they're saying, I don't understand this format. I look at a deck and it seems like it should be good. And then I owe three. That is happening more than any other draft format I've seen. So I, I guess to get to the point of my, or, One of the points of my question is, no, 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 you know, you're fine. And it's based on that. Right. So like with Rosetta draft specifically, yes. Does it feel like a luck format? Like, woo, you just got three O out of somewhere. No, no, because that happens. Right. Or like maybe another another way to look at it is if you you just get the three O draft, like someone hands you 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 a three O draft. Can that happen? You open a mirror guy and the two people to your right don't want to play Enigma. Yeah. And you just luck into it. Yeah. That happens less than in any other format. Okay. Um, because there isn't quite a mirror guy. Channel Millennium Tree is close. Okay. Uh, Arc Lightning is another step down. Like but there, are, are there are some parts. majestic bombs, yeah. but none of them are quite mirror guy, in my opinion. Tree, I, I if you want to argue that Millennium Tree is close, I'm okay with that. Sure. Um I I have seen some ridiculous things happen. Um in this draft. Like, I was, like, a one of Aurora in 10 people, and, like, I got a burn-up shock go four picks from my left to me and six picks from my right to me, or five picks from my right to me. Like, two burn-up shocks did that. But, like, there was, at our draft PQ on Saturday, Mm -hmm. Mara, like, pack one, pick one, I think red tilling. It's a good card. That's a great card. And then picks up, like, four premium red earth cards in the next few picks and then earth dries up completely she is the leftmost of four earth heroes or five earth heroes and she's looking at that and she's like i might be screwed so here's what has to happen in pack two i'm going to finish out all of my earth Uh uh-huh and then pack three, I take every Rune Blade card as they finish my as they finish their Earth on my right. And this was her top eight draft at a PQ, and she three would this draft as the okay. leftmost. So that's there yeah, was that's interesting. So right to so her like... left, there is three or four Lightning heroes, and to her right, there's just like three or four Earth heroes, just so... like flat out. No, that that kind of makes her thought process makes sense, right? So you get yes. some bomb earth cards in the beginning, and then you don't see any more earth, and so you're like, okay, I'll pick a another lane other than earth because I'm going earth, we'll, and I'll we'll finish take the utility stuff. Yeah, Rune Blade finish, looks good. Yeah, I'll finish the pack like that. Pack two, I'm passing to these losers that wouldn't give me any earth cards. I am not giving them any earth cards. Yes. Then I will take whatever class comes back to me, or the class that I'm in at that point. Yes. Okay, that's okay. very well. Like that's. That's really well thought through. Yes. No, the the skill expression in this draft process is... You could 100% see somebody, like especially like the armory level. Earth dries up, and they're like, no, pack one was supposed to be my earth pack, and then pack two I get and my they pivot. cards. And then they pivot, and they get half lightning cards, and then they're in, in, the, next, in the next pack, they're like... Frick. But then they're the rightmost lightning, and they get none. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but then also like, like it's so interesting. There there is oh, man. a lot of like th this, this is what I mean where it's like the skill expression in this drafting process is second only to bright lights and it's very close second. It's a very close second. Um Do you... and then the games Yeah. Like you they they learned a lot from Miss Vale in like the way matchups play out like between yeah each of the different lightning heroes between lightning and earth like between each of the earth heroes and like the couple of archetypes that can go in there where you have like mono wizard verdance that everyone knows about at this point you can have a very lightning heavy acilio you can have a very wizard heavy acilio that looks like the mono wizard verdance um where you just go flash zap zap flash zap zap like that's that great works. i love that format um, so this draft format requires a lot of time mm -hmm. because it's not just in the drafting process. It is also in the games played. It requires substantially more prep, prep than uprising. I think like wildly more. If your goal is to five, one draft, I think it takes wildly more than uprising. Like not, it's not even close. And I think most people will agree with that. Like uprising was not a yeah. great draft format. And um, this just kind of blows it out of the water. Um, I've, I've specifically drafting... heard, I think it was T, who was just like, his opinion at the time, I don't know if that still holds, is he was like, if you're Fi, you just decide that pick one, and then you just pick zero for three cards. If you're Pretty Illusionist, uh, you just grab all the Phantasm cards, and if you're Wizard, don't play Wizard. Uh, I think was his <laughs> was his thought process at the time. That... That's a, a little that simplifies it where it makes it easy on the day. I might be putting words in his mouth. He'll be fine with that. That sounds like tea. <laughs> um, that, that's a simplification that can work very well when you go into a big event and you don't want to worry about it as much. Mm -hmm. um, if you have to split your time, especially going into Worlds 1 where they had to play Blitz as True. well. Oh, my God. They had two constructed formats to play. Which and I believe why... they got five rounds of each of those constructed formats. Oh, my gosh. That's why Michael which meant the GOAT, because he proved it. Getting X2 <laughs> in draft, you could still safely That's so uh, crazy. top eight if you had very good constructed rounds in both halves. Yeah. But that's so crazy. coming back, coming I back. think this format, this draft format is probably the most intensive we've had for a worlds okay so i've heard opinions on how for big events your time should be split in cc versus draft mm. you said this draft format should you want to be amazing at it very time intensive how yeah. does the cc feel because the meta is mm -hmm. not super small like there's a lot no. of decks that a people could be like i'm playing this and you're like wow okay interesting i like that Yes. So it's a little, this meta is a little weird. Mm -hmm. It feels very akin to Amsterdam. Um, I can see that. I can see that. Where, but Enigma does not get rolled by the best aggro deck. And when, when Zen was the best aggro deck, Enigma got rolled by it. Yes. Enigma does not get rolled by Dio. I honestly don't know where that matchup ends up. I think it depends heavily on each of the builds and like what people have brought specifically. Like I don't have enough data on what all the Dio builds look like, what all the Enigma builds look like. It it's not near but it's not nearly as lopsided as Zen into Enigma, which was just like basically unwinnable for Enigma. Yeah. There was just nothing you could do. Um so you have your premier aggro deck, which I think is Dio by a decent, like, I think Dio is a decent step better than all your other aggro decks. Not as much as Zen was at his peak, for sure, like yeah. before Bond's uh, color ban. Um, I think it's much closer to Zen at Amsterdam, where you only have three Bonds, and it's still a very good aggro deck, but the other aggro decks can kind of play. Yeah, um, Dio could still match it mm -hmm. at the time. Um, Dio still loses to itself sometimes uh, where it's just like you draw a hand of three items and yeah. you're like well shit yes, um, yes. It that happens. still happens it still happens um, she is very she is fairly vulnerable to disruption maybe more so than Zen is yeah um, or was 
uh, erase face. When you send the second erase face, you just start taking cards very quickly. Not to get um, in I'm the a... weeds on deck construction too much. How many items does Dash sure, yeah. run? Uh, you will s 15 is like standard. It's pretty standard. I wouldn't be surprised to see some lists that are on 18, 19, maybe 20. I don't Frick. anticipate any list above 18 doing well if yeah. you're like main decking 18 items. Um, Jeez. <laughs> so the, you, you have like four or five aggro decks that are all viable to take to worlds. Are they like the super premium, like absolute best decks? Uh, not all of them are. I do think Dio is the best if you are a well practiced Dio player. You I, have to be well practiced at that deck. Um, I, I think the thing about Dio is interesting. So I've said a lot of times, I still firmly believe it, that a meta can be as complex as it wants to, except for in the aggro corner, there is a premier aggro deck. That yes. deck just is the best at value yep. damage. The thing is, Dio is so non-linear and difficult yes. that it's easy for, not easy, it is possible for other aggro decks to fight in that corner because 100%. she kind of she, gives them She's space. higher variance, higher ceiling. Yeah, yeah. And both of those, mean, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's asking a yeah. lot for anyone playing Dio, Mara, but yes. yes. 100%. Um, even to the point where Mara was not playing Dio on Sunday. She was playing Vincent. Testing Vincent. She's been working on Vincent for a while. I've heard of some and Cheerios her... Vincent list or mono red uh, Vincent list. It's you're not super red line anymore, mm -hmm. um, but Mara's build is very good at going block 12, one card 10. I love that. There's a part of it's... me that just nuts i i watched her do it to a viscerai who like took a full turn held his full hand and he just went like four go again two rune chance four go again two rune chance four go again three rune chance Which that's kind of and she's like too. four 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 uh ten shove and he was like this was supposed to be my pivot turn she's like yeah i know yeah <laughs> um she also rolled me twice rolled yes Cool. Like the first game we played was not oh. close, like not even close. I love that. Um, kind of I had a couple that. clunker hands, and the, mm -hmm. our second game was much closer. But she still was kind of in control of the game the entire time. But it was still a game. Um, but like Vincent is a reasonable deck to see and bring. Viscera is a hundred percent reasonable to bring. So come to temptation is a fucked up card against Dio. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting because like there's a lot of different kinds of aggro decks you could be playing. There's Enigma, which is just an Enigma, and... The the defensive illusionist control deck, and then you have the guardian control decks that are going to come out and try and fatigue Dio. Yeah, uh, I even think, like, there could technically be room for, like, you know, uh, all the tempo decks, right? So, like, Azalea, Victor... Azalea New. New, as, Like, yeah. Azalea New and Agro Victor as yes. your, like disruptive like, decks. Yeah. I don't totally. remember who it was, but mm -hmm. somebody said we have a very good triangle of aggro defensive and disruptive that makes sense i like that which seems pretty yeah accurate because yeah. you have like new azalea and aggro victor trying it, to be disruptive victor not doing as well necessarily i think and my, then you have defensive yeah. in like enigma and like cyb guardian so um, i i think the interesting thing about the triangle is that um Enigma can technically fight back against some of the aggro decks and it doesn't like hard lose to them. The aggro decks. Not anymore, yeah. Yeah, the aggro decks can fight back against the tempo decks, like just present a big enough turn at one point and win the game. And the defensive decks. Anyways. Um, yeah. Well, it's it, also just like the aggro decks all do something slightly different. Mm hmm. Where like, Vincent yeah. is like doing her thing with rune gates and going above right with that. You have Viscerai with a lot of aggressive split damage and just enough on hits to like be relevant, but also just like Red Rune Ranger Swarm has just showed up and been such a good consistency the insane. Tool for the deck. The um, uh, Malefic Incantations is getting my vote for the best card out of Rosetta, I think. The card's insane. At this point. Um, when I read that card, I assumed I was reading it wrong and ignored it. And then, nope. uh, no, that card is just 
actually insane. It's kind of it's kind of fucked up, honestly, for what it does for the game. But it also like a hundred percent fits what they're trying to do with the game, where it slows down and it's that turn to turn yeah. value comes out. Yeah, and it's like fine. they nailed it. They nailed yeah. it. Yeah, it's well so done. good. Well done. Um, you also still have Aurora being an aggro deck of just a light, a generic lightning aggro deck, and they hit that. They hit the nail on the head, where it's not like super disruptable but you can disrupt it weakest link in a race face are not nothing but they're not crazy but then they have like somersault for whatever they want to do with that where they can block like tw they can block six bounce them both make an embodiment and then just send eight like it's so good so um i was gonna say the the only problem i see with the triangle is it feels like the disruption corner of the triangle is a little weak considering it, touch, only, yes. it only fights one direction granted there's the, the majority yes. of the decks i shouldn't say the majority of the decks not necessarily the majority of the decks that show up but the majority of the types of decks are in the corner they're trying to fight but like yeah. if we see 40 percent of the meta enigma it might be uh a sad choice to have picked victor or yes azalea or something i i do think the disruptive decks so the disruptive decks are strong against the aggro decks and weak against the defensive decks. Yeah. And they are much weaker to the defensive decks than the defensive decks are against the aggro decks. So that side of the triangle is a little bit lopsided at the moment. Um, I think people have talked about this. Enigma is probably going to be the most represented deck because your next three are going to be your aggro decks. And it's going to be... Dio, Aurora, Viscerai, and then there's going to be like Florian in there, like like mid ranging pseudo. Like Florian is like squarely in the middle of the triangle, just trying to do his thing. Quintessential like mid range deck where the idea yeah. is it's slow enough to eventually outvalue the aggro decks and yep. fast enough to fight back on the control. Literally, definition mid range. Uh, and then he has plow under and felling to just like try and be a little yeah. disruptive and, it's, and like it's very disruptive <laughs> like those cards are good um it's okay somewhat it's not like it's not like turn ending but it's like it's not new yeah okay yeah because it's not new here here here's the thing like about those cards that like i think people don't understand mm -hmm. is yes you're gonna get a card out of it probably and then it's vanilla damage there's no on hit so you're not no. like so like the i difference... don't give a shit about that six once you've bought my arsenal <laughs> i mean it's it, i don't give the arsenal fuck. means something right that could be four or five points of value of in some sure. cases yeah. but it's like okay now i don't have a choice I, I don't have a choice in the map that's fine it happened sure. whatever i'm still playing the four cards in my hand against your six true and i guess it also like so an example being armor not a factor uh felling of the crown versus spinal crush is wildly different to let's say yeah. Phi or aurora someone who can't block very well and so it's like i have to dump my whole hand if i can to yes. stop the spinal crush whereas no, felling, felling felling just bottoms just, a card all right yeah. i'm gonna play a three card hand against your eight yeah do i love good. it no but i also get to choose my worst card out of this hand to bottom yeah and like you might have actually just made my hand better also could have been four cards, right? Like you have a card in Arsenal and then it's just like, you still yeah, get a four card hand. You still get to hand. play a four card hand. You're ending on a snatch and be like, I'm so going to take your whole hand if you want to block this turn. Holy frick. But. Yeah, so like, and, and that's kind of why Florian just sits there right in the middle. And I think it'll be, yeah. I expect people to bring it, but I don't yes, know 100%. how many. Because like, it feels weird to be in the middle of the triangle. You're going to have, yes, you're fighting, 100%. you're fighting on all angles at all angles and that feels yes. like a tight rope to stand on it is because like you have to do stuff well enough to contest these decks you have to be defensive enough to deal with the aggro decks because you're not going to be aggressive enough to deal with the aggro decks you have to be aggro enough to deal with the defensive decks because you can't be more defensive than them like florian into enigma is not a good matchup for florian traditionally um so like it's weird it's a very yeah. weird. And I think Florian's going to end up in the three through five range, probably fourth or fifth for Metashare for Worlds. Really? Yeah. 
You think they're I think wait, you're gonna, what? Wait, you're like, going to have Enigma first. Okay. And you're going to have Dio at second third. Sure. Yes. Aurora at 2 through 4. That makes sense. And Viserai at 3 4. When you put Florian right after that? 3 3 4 5. And then Florian's going to be 4 5. Zen's somewhere in there right below it. Zen is like 5 6. It, 5 6. I think so like I people have talked about this. I think Zen is actually fairly well positioned. Yeah. For this meta, because Zen State's kind of fucked up against Rune Blades. So you know we were just talking about how Florian. Okay. Uh -huh. so, so okay, okay. One corner of the triangle is weaker than the others. That's disruption. Yes. Right. And so yes. maybe you don't have to prep against the disruption decks as hard because there might not yeah. be as many. So, a mid range deck that's probably focused more on being disruptive to the aggro decks and being aggressive to the defensive decks. Yep. Like Florian. Uh, have a have a spot in the meta, but people are playing Zen right now in a very similar way where it's like kind of disruptive, kind mm. of aggressive. Well, I'm gonna say a disruptive. Not disruptive. Like, okay. He he is very much like you have that you have the triangle, and if disruption's mm -hmm. down here, Zen is squarely opposite that. Okay. Okay. Defensive on, aggro. He he is a pure. He's another value deck, but like value. he's on flick flax. He's got Zen state to deal with uh rune blades like he is just an extremely solid aggro slanted value deck um where he he's just doing good numbers turn after turn and then use end state of viscerai and it eats 15 damage because yeah. they can't do anything about that yeah yeah um like there uh, there was a story from a pq where somebody was like basically had just like set up like eight rune chants after a diplomacy and then zen just took an ip every turn to hold a chi every turn and said i'm gonna play a three card hand because this chi is worth like 12 minimum if, if you and as soon as you send those rune chants as as you, you lose chance. the game that's so insane yeah it's, like, I mean, just... it's, it's the, the Zensei works well against Viserai. It works well against Aurora. Vincent, it works well against Aurora. All Vincent? of it. Oh my gosh. Not It doesn't do quite as much in I mean, Vincent. I mean, because still. Like, it it get, is relevant. It is 100% yeah, relevant. Don't get me wrong. There's a turn where you could get four or five value out of it. or And that's yeah. it, and it lasts two turns, right? It lasts two turns. Oh. You're probably getting eight or ten value against Vincent out of it. Still, it's insane. Which is very good. But in Viserai, you're probably getting... 12 13 yeah aurora if you time it with an arc lightning you're getting a lot that t-shirt's insane um it the... just deletes arc lightning so i'm looking at my notes here yeah uh and it says here on page uh we're on the first page still uh yeah. that the original question was does cc require as much time as draft and we have talked about the meta for 20 minutes so <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot to go um, on in cc there's a lot you, going on in blitz too or wow uh draft a lot going on in yes. draft as well draft is so crazy it, this is the most uh, so it, it's weird to compare i guess because like you have worlds one where you have three formats because you have blitz and then you have worlds two where you don't and then, like i think this is definitely more prepped than worlds two um, I think it is, you had to make a choice for Worlds 1 where you put your prep. Um, but I think this is, I'll, I'll put it this way. You have to prep more for this Worlds than you did for Amsterdam. That's crazy. Because that's, that's a much better comparison in my mind. Okay. Yeah, no, um, it makes sense. They're both tier four events. They both yeah. have multiple formats. Um, what format is the calling? Is that just CC? CC. Okay. Um, so not you, but people you have been probably testing with is working at, looking at both formats, draft and CC. What? Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, if you were in this world's event, where, how are you dividing your time up between the two? Not necessarily like uh, a schedule, but more like a percentage. Yeah, yeah. Rough estimate. Honestly, yeah. I would probably be close to 50-50 for okay. me personally, mm -hmm. because I'm not a seasoned drafter. Okay. 
Fair um, enough. This is my first competitive TCG. I don't have a ton of draft experience. I think I went into Baltimore, PT Baltimore, with 10 drafts total under my belt in any TCG ever. That's insane. And I went to draft <laughs> at a Pro Tour level in the 3-1 bracket. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> like, um, Woo! <laughs> So I would be putting more time into draft because I need it, because I need to get more comfortable in just <laughs> in literally the physical practice of drafting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and making those decisions quickly and effectively and accurately is something that I don't have a ton of practice with. We don't have a ton of draft armories. We usually do like a week of them when the set releases, and then that's kind of it. We and also, I guess, I guess res I'm going to use the term respectfully as well, right? Because there's a certain amount of like, discipline like there's like a there's a, like a, a way that drafts are handled handled in tier three tier four events as opposed to like at sure. your armory everyone's just sure. talking hanging out doing whatever uh as yeah. opposed to a bigger event which it doesn't matter as much but it definitely can rattle newer players um oh yeah i mean it's like we the first pq i played this season we it was a draft pq and those are definitely a step up from armories. Yes. And we had someone kind of mess up and take two cards out of a pack. So they just had an extra card and they were kind of flustered for the rest of the event. Yes. Because they made that mistake. And all of yes. us there are just like, bro, whatever. We don't, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. a mistake. It happens. We know you didn't do it yeah. maliciously. Yes. Like, relax. But, um, but, but like at that, the same time, yeah. a call draft compared to a zone draft is different. Call drafts are very different. Yes. Like that, that's the actual like big step in like paper drafts that feels different. Yes. But like, I, just like reading signals, sending signals, all of like everything that happens in a draft, like I need more practice in because I haven't drafted for 20 years like some of these people. Um, those are, that's probably the skill set that like transfers, that's a skill set that transfers pretty well between games in terms of like reading sen signals, sending signals identifying very quickly what you need out of your deck and then like what's going to wheel and what's not like i'm still like learning and, how to yeah figure out what's going to wheel i think and then like i how think to deal one with that thing people struggle with is like card evaluations in a draft setting yeah. as well because cards how your card evaluations a lot different in draft yeah how your card evaluations like... change based on what mm -hmm. you've picked already like yes this yeah. set is so <laughs> like they took the they took misfail which is like yes. very synergy based mm-hmm like there, there were two Zen archetypes in Misfail. One is the I never transcend. I'm just going to send fourteen damage every turn with zero for fours. Mm -hmm. And then there's the transcend, transcend heavy archetype, where I have a red key unleash and I'm just going to play it four times because I have three preserved traditions and mask. Yeah. And you have to understand which one you're in, and then build your deck accordingly because the deck that has no transcends has like eight, nine, ten blues, and the deck that has a bunch of transcends has like 15 yeah so like that was something that like i had to learn very quickly for that format mm -hmm. for nats in amsterdam um and then so like for me personally circling back yes. it's probably about 50 50 um anyone who is more seasoned and more comfortable with the draft format is like you probably go closer to 60 40 for cc draft just because the cc format is so weird but you're picking your deck early and then you're figuring out the top eight matchups. Yes. Um, um, and having game plans into them mm -hmm. because like you're not able to play the top eight decks against the top eight decks and do 600 plus games of practice as a solo. Your team is probably going to be able to figure out a lot of that, but you as an individual, you're going to have to pick a deck and stick with it. Yeah. So, um, so I think, uh, I think the interesting thing, I think I think one of the things I'm most excited about Worlds, there's a lot of things I'm really excited about Worlds for, um, but I think one of the things I'm very excited about is to watch the draft process go down. We're going to get to watch two drafts yes. of somebody. I'm yep. going to assume day one is going to be Alex Argeyu and day two is going to be Michael Hamilton, of course. So uh, Day one is going to be a 5-0 and day two is going to be an 8-0. That's yes. what I said. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> <laughs> We're, our, our round one feature match is going to be Alex Argeyu, Like as, as a person who's really excited about um, the narrative of competitive flesh and blood, I put so much weight. 
I put more weight on world's champions than than they does than they they need that kind of pressure. Like they're just sure. on they're on another level in my book. So I'm very yeah. very excited about worlds. Um, next question. Uh, there's a couple more, but uh, uh, some of these are a little faster. What's the sure. like surprising dark horse hero from the format? Vincent. Is that it? I mean, so, some people okay. were thinking about some, it. Some but people are going to say maybe Zen. Maybe I've heard Zen. Yeah, I can see that. But too. like we've seen Zen. We Zen came back week one of PQs. And if you weren't looking at Zen after week one of PQs, I think you weren't paying attention. Fair enough. Um, because Chase the Tail is still just a fucked up card. Mauling Key is still some of the best two card hands in the game where it's like mm -hmm. a two card nine offensively. Flick Flack is still a fucked up card especially into Dio, where you go block four, block five. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, some people are going to point to Zen. I don't think he's really a dark horse. I think he should be on everyone's radar and a deck that you're prepared, for, like, at least ready to see. Um, we know he's good into the Rune Blades. Like, I don't think that's much of a dark horse. I think Vincent is actually my dark horse pick. I... I thought it was a good deck and it had some good stuff going for it, but our early testing wasn't super good. We thought it got fatigued fairly easily. Um, I watched it play its mid range and aggro matchups though, and was very impressed. Like, extremely cool. impressed. That's it was cool. gross what this deck was doing. Malefic Incant. So, like, people talk about Malefic Incantations for Viscerai just being insane with, like, Rune Rager Swarm and Swarm and Gloom Veil and Amplify the Arc Knight. Yeah, I think in Malefic does more for Viscerai than any card that Viscerai yeah. has got, or yeah. more for Vincent, excuse yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. than any card Vincent has gotten. Um, it's really it, good. I don't think it's close. Um, I think Eloquent Eulogy does not hold a candle to what Malefic Incantation has done for that deck. No, Malefic's insane. Like we, Mar and I were watching the spoilers uh -huh. come out, and uh -huh. like because the, the comments and rares came out, and we saw a Malefic Incantation, or we saw a Deadwood Dirge, and we're like. That is just an auto include three of. Yeah. Because you banish, like, you could be zero rune chant, you banish whatever rune gate three cost you have, mm -hmm. you sack the rune chant, make three, you play it. Two card, like, Easy. ten. Easy. Done. Um, it was fantastic. That card's insane. Um, and then we saw Malefic Incantation, and we're like, this is just another fucking great card. Yes. And then we watched, we played it this weekend. Yeah. And it was fucking disgusting. It is disgusting what that card lets you oh, do. So, because it's you you play yeah. a two card hand mm -hmm. on or like a you you invest one card mm -hmm. on an earlier turn. And it basically just says all your two cost rune gates are free for three turns. You play a second card and all of your three cost rune gates are free for the next two turns. So you're on like a five card, it's like thirty five. I keep forgetting that they just get a free rune chant every turn yes she's insane bro like vin i think vincent is the dark horse because like you and, and this is specifically the mid-range build that mm -hmm. mara's been working on um because it's running reduces it's running sinks fates and the block card that rune blade got that block like, card's oh my insane god okay no in both modes of vincent in vincent both modes are 0 for 4. it's so insane because that room so chant good. is one damage and one resource. Yeah. And you prevent two. Well, I mean, technically, the way room blade math has always worked is a room chant is supposed to be one resource and one damage. Uh, but old, old, old Viscerai could never In get Vincent it to work. Vincent, it is. In Vincent, In Vincent it, it just is. Vincent like, is. It's, 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 it's funny seeing Vincent say Shadow Room Blade. I said this a while ago. When really what she actually is, is Viscerai 2. Like sort of i think she is I, people are working on that because there there was a, a picture from last night at armory mm -hmm. where there was a 61 damage turn oh and it was go. four room gates let's go no i mean it like it's just wide room gate it looks like the things yeah a lot of the things we say about vincent um are what they wanted to say about Viscerai when Viscerai came out, but when he came out, he was sure. Dead. Which actually brings me to yeah, my he next point. Crucible. Yeah, he needed a lot of things. Uh, but um, even after Crucible, Fi, like he Fi was is just a dark horse. Yeah. Fi is not a dark horse. 
no, no, no. Fi is actually what I was going to describe it. So Dark Horse has a chance, right? By definition? Yes. Okay. Fi is... I I was going to call it the Viscerai place because last... Was it Last Worlds or was it a PT or two no. ago? Where it was like, there was the 5-0 Viscerai, 4-0 Viscerai. Uh, LA. LA? That was LA. So LA, we had the 4-0 Viscerai and Twitter lost their crap and exploded just exploded and i think that's what phi will probably be at worlds is we'll see one four oh phi and everyone's gonna lose their mind they're gonna be like oh my gosh alex is coming back and Uh, then they're gonna get blown up by a dio and it's not gonna matter their day two is not gonna be pretty or no it's really not because it it is just like a stat check deck Mm -hmm. where it's like as soon as the equipment is gone they are a bad deck they Mm -hmm. are um yep that's just it i i I definitely say i started day one wins end of turn zero against phi i was at 19 and i'm yes and i win that game easy is that okay unrelated uh or onto a different subject well who are you bringing to worlds if you're willing to say that uh i'm almost certainly taking prism you're bringing multiple decks but you're uh, certainly yes Most prism is like, yeah. Said everyone said if I had no chance last year. Mm, I mean, yeah, but that's because like that. Yes, that's how variance works. But like, also, Phi was still a better deck last year than he is this year. That's that's also true. Like, Um, I think Alex also had to draw insane in both of his games, where he had to see all fifteen of his blues in the top forty cards of his deck twice so and what he is... still didn't have like he still had a mask of momentum draw my matchup to play so like, that was just a free semifinals for him yeah and he does not have fight does not have that this year so does who's who's five this year is five this year Vincent? i think so okay uh, that makes sense. not not entirely not quite not quite um Vincent Victor is Vincent. You, Victor is Phi. So, <laughs> ye, pretty close. Yeah. Because okay. things had to go right for Phi to win last year. Yes. Um like, much it's more so than possible, the, but had like the player the player had to be good, of course. Yes. But it was more like things had to go very right for Phi last mm-hmm. year. Um I don't think that's Vincent. I think Vincent is more down to people have to figure it out how to beat Count Your Blessings and how to beat Enigma. Because there are Vincent builds that will win aggro matchups, 100%. If you're rune gating every turn, you're going to win aggro matchups. That is just the way that works. Yes. Um, I have, but, I think, one more question, unless you have more to yeah. talk on that. Not, I don't think so. I'm okay. taking Prism. Uh, I'm a Prism player, and I'm okay with Prism's matchups. Um, if I were to take a deck because it's the best deck, it would be Dio, but I am not comfortable taking that deck to a... 14 round CC event in the calling and not dying to variants as well as on top of my ability to mitigate the variants anyways. Um, I'm so not comfortable with that. So if I, I was I going with prism for that in, in the universe where I'm a pro player, um, yep. if I was going, I think at this point I would consider myself a, if we're looking at our previous discussion on what a meta triangle looks like, what's up yep. Gordon. I'm a, uh, I would be a disruptive player. That's how I want to play yep. the game is disruption. And in that sense, I'd probably be bringing new. That just makes the most sense to me of yeah. the disruption decks. Um, that said, I, I think new I is think a very she, beautiful pick. Mm-hmm. If you figure out exactly how you want to approach Dio. Yeah. Your de- also, I think your deck list is like, int- like you is new deck list you, going into world is going to be interesting. In my opinion, your 60, yeah. your 80. Is I mean, you're, you're targeting, Mm-hmm. stuff which is you your top three decks to target are uh dio viscerai and aurora and then you have to have um, something to do into enigma yes you have to have you have to try and have a plan for enigma which mm-hmm. is not great it's better than the other two i think i think i think she's got a better chance into enigma than victor, victor and azalea, and azalea. Azalea has a better Enigma matchup. Does she really? Then it might be yes. Azalea. So I think Azalea just says, just here's 14. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs>
Like, <laughs> Azalea is not a freebie for Enigma. Um, blood rots are also very frustrating for mm -hmm. uh, for Enigma to deal with. Mm -hmm. Because you can't block... Like, if you block and, like, one goes over, you're not going to be able to keep a ward. Like, you have to keep a blue for your ward to not die to the blood rot. Mm -hmm. Um... Well, I have it's... I have a quick question. Nathan brought it up. Sure. Charles Charles not going to be at World Worlds, which sure. is a little sad. But I like to think of it as he's our first announcement for next Worlds. Um, so I mean, he could he could. <laughs> there's a weird world where he yellows before next Worlds, but I don't think that happens. Um, I don't think so at least at least I think he's going to have we have Peach three hundred points going in next Worlds easy just because we have yeah, yeah, yeah. three PQ seasons or whatever between now and then. Yep. But like, anyways, he's not gonna uh, LL. I, I, the question I was gonna ask this is unrelated. Uh, does Charles' new channel trigger sure. ward? No, it's a loss of life. It is lost life, not damage dealt. That's crazy. That's so. Either way, it was really dealt, interesting. If it was damage dealt, his Enigma matchup is way better. True, but like. I don't know. I feel like there's like an interesting possibility of uh, Jarl does something in the early game, Enigma gets to a low health and stabilizes, and then he has a way to leak damage through Ward. Oh yeah, because he just he gets to bypass Ward with it. Yeah. Yes, it's better late game. It's worse early game. Yeah, I think as it long was... as he can keep the board clear. Dang, that's. I'm excited for no, Jarl. He's that, awesome. <laughs> that channel is really well designed. It's really because it, it yeah it might as well say uh, Jarl spec at the moment. Does it not? I thought for some reason I thought it did. Does it not? No. Oh. The block card and the minus one in dominate. The ones the Jarl ones specs. with art of him on it, other than Mangle. Yes. Um, yes. Yes, the you're new right. Cards with him on it. Ooh, um, what Shinima ice here is one. Who wants? Who else wants eyes another than him? Nobody, because it's, Nobody. it's just equipment, because right? No, so it only checks for frostbites in equipment zones, and nobody makes yeah. frostbites in equipment zones Except besides Yarl. Yarl. Yeah, which also makes me wonder if the new Ice Wizard, when that eventually comes out, will makes put frostbites in, in equipment, equipment zones. zones. I, I, you um, know, I think that I would be. A, I don't think so. I think because be they're gonna have a hard direction. time. So here's the thing with that: mm -hmm. AB doesn't break. Well, then just break the AB. <laughs> a wizard that can break their equipment? Give, oh, bro, that if sounds they evil. Give a, if they give an ice wizard a way to break AB... <laughs> oh, it's broken. Um, They have to be real careful with that shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, So um, another interesting rules interaction that I did hear about recently is the new assassin equipment. You can AB yeah. and spell void the same thing. Yeah. That's yep. cool. That's a cool yeah, design. No, that is 100% like designed that way intentionally. That's for, so like, cool. Wildfire. Like, Winter's Assassin coming. is so much better in Decano than it was before. Because, like, even if you tap out for something, you still just have yeah. Spell Void 2. Yes. And then if you have one resource float, you're preventing three still. Mm -hmm. Like, that equipment is so good for Assassin and it's so well designed. And I, I, I love it. I'm glad it's not AB2. I'm glad it's not Spell Void 2. They, like, hit the nail on the head. You have to pay a price for each piece. I like it. Nailed it's it. great. It's actually great. Nailed it. They um, gave you a full set, so like you choose where each piece goes. You can still yeah. run lantern, like. And if anybody wants, just, uh, I think it's the chest piece. I have a coal foil. Call me. Um, the yeah, uh, no, it's that the, that stuff is sick. The final question I was going to ask, because um, mm -hmm. we're getting late into this. This is my favorite question, and I saved it for last. Uh, which country is winning the team event? Mm. I might have already asked this question, but uh, um, on a different one, but I don't think I have. Hang on. I want to see. They posted a look at the teams? of all the. Yes. Send me a link uh, if you find it, because I think that's really interesting. Somebody posted a spreadsheet with like it updating where they updated who was playing and who wasn't based on like who oh, could go yeah. and who could. I forgot. And I don't remember that. where that was. Uh, it's somewhere. I where that is. Uh, team Cup. 
America didn't change, right? Like, all three of them are going? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they're all there. Okay. Okay. The list is not on here. Um, I think Spain is obviously in the running because uh -huh. that's Pablo Pintor and Samurai, Sunflower Samurai. He was like a substitute, right? Because he wasn't in the three. I think so. Yeah, he was a substitute, so... Which I think he's solid sub substitute, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just sub in Pablo Pintor. It's fine. Everybody else just goes, oh no. Yeah. Um, James White's pick for current best player in the world, Pablo Pintor. Yeah. Current goat. I mean, he's got a good accolades. You're going with Spain. Jeez, bunch of un-American. Uh, something. Birdie will take it home. I got faith. Um, in, I mean, it's, uh, like it's hard to, it's hard to American not say. Fab. Spain, U.S. is in contention, but Spain, I think Spain is US, up there. Um, Germany's probably up there. Klein. Let's see who's in who's in Germany. Klein. Uh, Max Klein, and then there's another guy, uh, Christian Hauk. I know that name. Um. Oh. Uh. So he top aided Lille on dash. And I believe oh. he was German national champ that year. Whoa! Um, the accolades. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, uh, Poland. Poland. I was just Poland. Bartosz uh, and them. Yeah. Like, they go crazy. UK. Um, I don't know who's on the UK team, but UK is probably is of course a team to watch. I don't remember the the names at the moment. I think we talked about this before, but like the thing about UK is like I feel like they have maybe they have a smaller group of people, but their people are like killers. Their right? top 16, yeah, the we, top we talked about this actually killers. this weekend when we were uh, in Richmond for PQs. Um, they, if you look at the top 16 of UK, they are absolute monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, they're insane. Like, it's absolutely insane because it's like George Roger, Rob Catton, um, Folks, Alex Chitu, Shamir Sami, like, I, uh, they're all, like, top sixteen of UK is all beasts. Um, I guess so, I guess New Zealand is probably always going to be in contention. Like, they got great players over there. New, New Zealand is playing New Zealand's forever. top eight is in contention. Um, Australia's top eight Australia. is in contention. Um, I mean, Japan's got the home turf advantage. I don't know how good Japan. I mean, Japan, is. you need to watch because they've always been good. I assume I assume PT games. winner is in the team event. The Shoma is probably number one Shoma? Elo in Japan. Yeah. I would be surprised if he wasn't. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, all right, uh, pick a region. Which country is which country is winning? Um. Okay. So I'm picking is... I'm picking America just because it's the home team. Sure. It's the uh, or not the home team, but it's it's the team from home. I got to represent, not necessarily, um, like, I don't necessarily care about America, the country, but f flesh and blood, America, flesh Canada. and blood, American flesh and blood. I mean, like, we're, we're picking. Yeah. Oh, God, I, why can't I remember his name? Who got second? He's top aided. He top aided Baltimore. I forget. He was the who, KO player. Who, who is it? Brody? No, not Brody, not No, I'm, um, I'm trying to think, Evan. but there's Brody and Evan and our third representative whose name escapes me as well. I will recognize him, his name as soon as I see it. Same. Brazil for the uh, Dark Horse? I, I could see that. Like, Brazil is probably I don't know be how challenging good for is. top eight. I don't know how good Brazil is. Uh, they've put people... So I know they put one in top eight of... Uh, LA. Yeah. Um, because he was on Kano. Andrew Rothermel. Yeah, let's go. He was second place at yes. uh, US Nats. Um, he's a fantastic player, has been forever, like since before New Jersey, I assume. But like he was in top 16 of PT New Jersey, top aided uh, Baltimore, second place at um, U.S. Nats with KO in Enigma Zen meta. Um, 
Like, I... Very good player. Like, it, it's very hard for me to bet against them, but if I'm going to have to pick a team, I honestly think it might be Spain, where it's like Daniel Correas and Pablo Pintor and another Sunflower Samurai, because they're... Pablo in LL probably does pretty fucking good. It, he definitely wants to play the game in a very specific way and he'll get to do that in ll like yes. there's there's he, he kinds of decks, whatever way he wants yeah. yeah there's kinds of decks that he wants to play more than others um yeah. like what did he play recently it was enigma at um is that a battle horn leon no that was a leon was that, was that a calling frick yeah Calling Leon. Yeah, yeah, calling Leon. Leon. Um, Three-time calling champion or some shit. Holy frick. Just a killer. Um, they had to, like... They probably had to, like, update that three floatings video in the middle of making it. Uh, I've been recommended that video, like, three times in the last two days. So good. Like. That video is so good. Dude, I've watched that video 12 times now. It's insane. I bet. Um, but I I can see I can see Spain as a, as a very solid yeah. answer. I'm going North America because uh, represent. It, I will not be surprised at all if North America is who wins yep. it and Brody is on like Skeleta Viscerai, Andrew's on Starvo because I know uh, uh, Rothamel's on Starvo because I know he played that at New Jersey. Brazil might be the dark horse. Um, I was honestly Starvo's maybe pretty like... fucking good. Yeah, Starvo's Starvo good. got some good fucking cards out of Rosetta. Yep. You know what he got? He got blue somersault. Oh, he got... I was thinking about all the earth cards, and I was just like, mm, which ones would you even play? Somersault is... He got blue somersault, and insane. he got... He got channel lightning valley. Because he wants... He wants good yellow... Uh, good blue lightning cards, because you are often pitching them but you need them and uh specifically blue somersault is an insane addition it's so good it's so good you want to somersault an oak and old after you fused it and swung a hammer i was thinking Ugh. about using it defensively for like one card a six block nah fuck that shit you want to restrict my fucking oak and old? I'll put it back in my deck. Put it in oh. my hand, in my arsenal. Oh. We're going. He gets to oak and old nine times because he gets to play oak and old. He gets to somersault it and he gets to uh, uh, seeds Candle tomorrow. Old. Candle old. So ten times. Does he run blue? I, I think he only runs tomorrow? the blue somersaults, but yeah. Does he run blue tomorrow? Whatever that card's called. So seeds. tomorrow. So tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, if he does... He runs Pulse he of Candle Hold. Yeah. Wait, how many does that put? Two? One? What is that card? Uh, it puts two, but yeah. you can only get one Oak and Old. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then you get ten Oak and Olds in your deck. Uh, you Oak and probably Oak get and old, five. Oak and Old. Theoretically. You, so tomorrow, Oak so tomorrow, and old so is tomorrow, summer salt, summer salt, summer salt. Oh, Frank. <laughs> it is restricted. Frank. Yeah. So you have Oak and Old. LL's crazy. You have three somersaults, and then you have a candle hold, is what I anticipate. So you can probably do it five times if you're lucky. If you do it five, um, you're not gonna get to do it five times. Because if you do no, it like three times, three times then they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> three times then your other crap and they're dead. You can also you can somersault anything that is Starvoed. So you can somersault Crippling Crush, you can somersault Spinal, you can somersault Starstruck. Like, I, uh, that's there. Lexi gets to play Rainbow Summer, Summer or like not Rainbow Somersault, but she'll probably play like four. Yellow and blue. No, other way. Red is red zero and... cost. Okay, red and yellow. Yeah, she'll play three reds and probably one yellow. Is my guess. Like, you really lucked so out. So she gets Some three more. Th some she of gets three more three oaks. Are practicing for three events like first worlds, and you're over yes. here. You're like, ah, just CC, and I'm gonna play Prism and just beat them all anyways. I'm uh, just gonna play Prism and do my thing and have fun. Yeah, and it's gonna be cool. Any, uh, how long are you staying? Are you 
are you attempting to do other things while you're in Osaka? I don't have PTO yet for it. Um, mm -hmm. That'll be next year that I get to actually extend trips. So I probably won't extend London. Um, I've been to London before. Uh, Lame. We've seen it before. Next. Um, the next APAC PT, uh, mm -hmm. I will most likely extend and do some sightseeing wherever that is. I'm going to guess that's Australia. And next Oceania world's will region. be in Richmond. I mean, I'd be okay with that. I think but... it, I think actually like I, I said it for this world. It's not knowing that they were going to move into the Japanese market, but I expected worlds three to be on East coast. And yeah, now I'm going to have to say I, it worlds four is in East coast. I and think I almost say... certainly worlds four is East coast, either Boston or Philly or New York. If I had Raleigh? to guess, I can see nah, there's no way they do worlds in Raleigh. Atlanta. Possible. Unlikely. It's probably New York area. I, I would pick either Boston, New York or Philly. Yeah. I guess that's not all, too far. From all me. of those are actually like places that I'm OK with traveling to and sightseeing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. But. All right. Yeah. I this. I'm so fucking excited for next week. <laughs> I'm excited and I'm not even going. I'm Dude, so I got I'm I'm getting I'm getting I'm having a couple of I'm going to have at least one friend over that I'm bribing mm. with uh board games. Um and it's just going to be an excuse to like point at the TV and talk about the game while they're yep. uh trying to do something else. Um Yep. But I think that about wraps it up. Is there anything else that I forgot to go over? Uh we'll get to LL weapons next time. Yeah, we'll get to LL weapons. <laughs> Frank, we're going to have, we are, we're going to have a slow week one week, and that's just going to be the topic that comes up. And it's not going to be next week because next week Kevin's going to be at Worlds, and it's not going to be the week after because Worlds have just happened, and that's what I'm going to want to talk about again. Um, sure. So, uh, Kevin. And we'll have a ban list. Will we have a ban list? Mm, uh... We might even have a special guest because there's a couple of people I've been trying to bug and they're like, wait till after Worlds. And I'm like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Ooh. So we'll see what happens. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Are we getting a ban list? Uh, I know it is. Oh, is it banned and restricted? I'm just going to search banned. Sep. 424. This is all their books. Uh, November 11th. So the week after the week after Worlds. So Worlds we ends on that Sunday, November 3rd. Mm -hmm. uh, November 4th is the Monday. One week after that, November 11th is the next ban list. Okay, so we can next maybe do like uh Band speculation that week at least as well yeah which will um, probably just be high octane and then we chill you really think you really think high octane i shouldn't get into this right now do you think high octane we shouldn't but dropped? yes okay okay that's what we'll leave it at i'm my answer is i don't care uh so it, kevin do we have any shout outs um i'm gonna i'm gonna not shout out our stuff and i'm gonna shout out the fab tcb fab tcg stream that uh go subscribe watch to the youtube that. channel go that's where that. world's coverage is going to be yes. um if there is not team ll coverage on thursday bug them throw a fit bug the shit out of them and if yeah. there's not i will be there on blue sky and I'll you know what we're gonna out. get we're gonna end up getting a live blog and they'll be like no 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 we wrote all about it and an hour no. after Give everything us, show happened. us the fucking games you want to make ll <laughs> real format show us the games <laughs> show Come us the on. games this Give is, it to us. This is what we were talking about. We're like, okay, if you want LL to be like a real format that we play armories for, do it at Worlds so you have your best players working for it. They're and doing they, it. They did that in one of the better ways that they could have rather than just ham-fisting it into the entire Worlds format. And we already talked about how we and love still the Worlds format it. that they've kind of developed now because they added a little more. The, the CC, changes but... they made to it are fantastic. I'm super happy with it. If they don't do, like no coverage of it, come on, come on. They have to. That's such a that's such a joke. Are you are you legally allowed to hover with a phone? 
Uh, I think the answer is definitely no, right? Uh, I, <laughs> I not, think there's no way they let you do that. It might not be illegal, <laughs> but it might not be legal. Someone's going to pull you aside. That is not going to happen. Um, I will walk around and I will make a Blue Sky account just to post yeah. what's going on in each round. Just that's funny. so that that information is out there and so people can follow it. Because that's, that really stuff is cool so. as shit. And I desperately hope there is a stream of it because they did not put one on that coverage page mm -hmm. so so subscribe to the flesh and blood uh youtube, YouTube channel, channel. Yeah. uh keep up to date with them on blue sky because they have a blue sky account um i'm gonna be live tweeting the i'm gonna be live posting the entire time as i am just just absolutely just thinking nothing but about the games going on during worlds um, and then Kevin's going to be, uh, hopefully he won't have to do messages about that little event. Hopefully they'll just give us coverage. On that Thursday, hopefully not. Hopefully and then not. Friday I'll be playing side events. Um, I'm signed up for the, like, CC Ira one, and then the, uh, new promo one. And Heck then I'll yeah. be playing the calling. Um, I'm going to take Prism for it because it's my comfort pick and I've been doing pretty well with it. Uh, I have two, I have two PQ wins with it now. This season, that's good. Um, that's actually good, which is kind of wild. Yeah, because it's not a deck I'd been like particularly working on, and there were no changes. Like the books, the book ban happened, and I made some changes, and then I just was like, oh, okay, it, it works. I don't know, you know, it's fine. <laughs> okay, uh, actual um, actual yeah. one last shout out is where Worlds is not this weekend. Uh, so this weekend, what Correct. you should do is go watch our video that we're going to put out this weekend, which is actually, if, if y'all are looking at my outfit and being like, oh, that looks familiar, that's because this is the outfit I'm wearing in the video and you're remembering the future. So go watch that video this weekend, whenever that happens. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>